Okay, the purpose of this video is to uh, provide some information about systems and different ways of characterizing them, uh, different characteristics or properties of systems. Uh, the idea behind doing this is that once we understand what type of a system we have, sometimes we can apply certain types of uh, analysis or other techniques, or at least tells us what sorts of analysis or other techniques we need to use. So, um, we've drawn a system. It has inputs and outputs, and or an input and an output. And we'll spend some time talking about uh, the different uh, characteristics you can uh, talk or you can look at. Uh, the first characteristic is um, how many inputs and outputs it has. The second one we'll look at is stability, and the third one we'll look at is causality. So. The system we have here has has one input and one output. That means that we will call this system, if we were to characterize it, a single input, single output system, or SISO for short. Um, <coughs> you might also think of a system that has two or maybe even three inputs and possibly two outputs. So with the three inputs and the three outputs, this would be a multiple input multiple output system, or MIMO. So um, an example of a MIMO uh, system might be a car. Uh, you're all familiar with the fact that cars, you might have like a steering wheel as an input, and you might have the gas pedal as an input, and the brake pedal. The output uh, might be the speedometer, or the speed, and maybe the direction of the car. So that would be an example of a MIMO system. Um, now we can also take uh, this and make combinations as of the type that you might imagine. If I have a single, oh dear, that's a mess. input, that's another mess, multiple output system, then uh, this would be a system that has one input and multiple outputs. I can also have a multiple input signal or single output system. So the idea is that systems may have one or more inputs and outputs. Uh, for most of the things that happen in an introductory course in signals and systems, we assume a single input, a uh, single output system, because most of the analysis is fairly straightforward, at least relatively. Uh, you can extend the types of analysis that you do to multiple input, multiple output systems, but it's uh, not easy. So that's uh, counting how many inputs and how many outputs you have. Um, the next uh, thing that we'd like to talk about is, this, is an idea of stability. So stability is very important because systems that are unstable typically do bad things. So um, let's think of a single input, single output system. As an example, we might think of a cruise control for a car. And the idea is that uh, the cruise control uh, the input is the desired speed, and the output is the speed that the car is actually going. If the cruise control is a stable system, then as long as this input value stays uh, below well, stays bounded, 
then the output value will stay bounded. So that's a good thing, particularly when you're talking about the cruise control on your car. An example of an unstable system would be if you set the car to go at a certain speed, but the output speed starts to increase without, without bound. It just keeps getting faster and faster and faster. Uh, this is more or less the problem that Toyota seemed to have. Um, so uh, this would be an example of an unstable system. Um, generally, you want systems to be stable because stable systems respond in predictable ways. And uh, they don't have things going on in them that get, you know, they don't have mechanical motions or electrical signals or whatever that get so big that things start to break. The mathematical term that we'll use for stability is bounded input, bounded output, or BIBO. So a system is BIBO-stable if an input that never goes to infinity ensures that the output of the system will always be less than infinity. That's BIBO-stable. Um, we may uh, have time later on to go into that in more detail and show mathematically how to, how to demonstrate that a system is uh, uh, stable. Okay, the last concept we're going to talk about in this video is um, the concept of causality. And by the time we're done with this, you may be going, why on earth would we do causality? Everything seems to be causal. Um, let's see if I can spell it first. And causality simply means that if the output of the system is y of t, and this is a time index. So um, <clears throat> if I'm looking at the output of a system at a particular point in time, t, that that output depends on the input for values of tau, where tau is a Greek letter that we use a lot, less than or equal to t. So this is the mathematical way of saying that something is causal. What this is saying is that the system, to get the output at a particular time, can look at the current time, which is t, and all of the past time, but it can't look into the future. So a causal system cannot look into the future to determine what its output is. Now clearly, if we could come up with an uncausal system, then um, that would actually be very nice because you could do things like predict the stock market. You could have your system look into the future, tell you what the stock market is, and then uh, you could uh, 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 invest accordingly. Uh, in the real world, as we know it, then that just doesn't happen. So why on earth do we talk about causality at all? Well, the issue is this. We've shown this is a function of t, which we typically interpret as time. But if this variable t is not time, if it's, for example, space, um, then it's actually very easy to construct a non-causal system. There, basically, non-causality means that you might be uh, doing image processing or something like that by looking at a whole image, not by looking at the image up to a certain point. So for systems that are dynamic, that are you know, or, or things are happening in real time, or in time, uh, in the real world, we can't create non-causal systems. It turns out that uh, in terms of analysis, it's usually, it can be quite often very beneficial to deal with a non-causal system, uh, to learn things about, uh, say, Fourier transforms and so on, which we'll do later on. But in the real world, systems are almost always causal. Non-causal systems are helpful because they allow us to do some things analytically. And again, if things are two-dimensional, then uh, or uh, if our variable is not time, then we might be in much better shape, too. So this pretty much ends the video on the first video on system properties. There will be another one on linearity and time invariance.